Chemical kinetics is the study of the speed at which chemical reactions take place and how various factors affect that speed. So what is it that makes a particular reaction fast or slow? Fundamentally, the rate of a chemical reaction has to do with what is known as the activation energy. This is the amount of energy it takes to make the reaction happen. In order to convert reactants into products, molecules will need to collide, chemical bonds may need to be broken, atoms may need to be rearranged, along with any number of other events, all of which cost energy, even if the products of the reaction are ultimately more stable than the reactants. So processes that have small activation energies tend to be fast, and processes that have large activation energies tend to be slow. So can this activation energy be measured? Yes, and it's the purpose of this experiment. So let's find out how. If two molecules have to collide in order to react, then the rate of their reaction will increase with the concentrations of each of them. However, if we make the concentration of one so large relative to the other that it effectively never changes, then the rate is really just proportional to the concentration of the minor component. And we can change a proportionality to an equation by incorporating a constant, which we'll call the rate constant. This is what we call a pseudo first order rate law. First order because it depends on only one reactant, pseudo because we're ignoring the fact that other reactants are present in excess. The rate constant is an intrinsic measure of how fast a chemical reaction actually is, and it turns out that it can be directly related to the activation energy using what's known as the Arrhenius equation, which states that the rate constant is equal to A, a constant known as the pre-exponential factor, multiplied by E raised to the power of the activation energy over R times T. So we can find the activation energy if we measure K. So how can we measure K? Well, in a first order reaction, the rate is always slowing down since the reactants are constantly consumed. So if we track the concentration of reactants with time, we'll notice that they decay exponentially at a rate that depends on K. By taking the natural logarithm to get rid of the exponential and rearranging a bit, we get the equation of a straight line. So by measuring the reactant concentration at a bunch of different times, plotting the natural logarithm of concentration versus time can give us a slope, which is our rate constant. Now, back to the Arrhenius equation. Since we don't know the value of the pre-exponential factor, knowing the rate constant doesn't give us enough information to calculate the activation energy. To get around this problem, we can measure the rate constant at two different temperatures, and with a little bit of algebra, rewrite the Arrhenius equation like this, and solve for the activation energy. In order to track the concentration of our reactants, we'll use a purple-colored reactant, known as permanganate. Since it reacts with benzyl alcohol to form a colorless compound, we'll know how much we have left by how purple the solution still is, which can be measured with a spectrophotometer. So in summary, we have a pseudo first order reaction and we're monitoring its progress over time by measuring purpleness every so often. We can use this data to calculate the rate constant K using the rate law. And if we measure K at two different temperatures, we can use the Arrhenius equation to determine the activation energy. Okay. Now that we've reviewed the relevant theory behind chemical kinetics, let's jump into the experiment itself. We want to react the permanganate with benzyl alcohol at two different temperatures. Let's start with the room temperature reaction first. To begin, place a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask on a top loading balance and tear it to zero. Then add 45 grams of benzyl alcohol solution and use a 5 mil pipette to add exactly 5 mils of the purple potassium permanganate solution. Swirl the solution to mix it and note the time because this is the time at which your reaction began. Be sure to keep your flask stoppered with a cork to prevent contamination. You'll need to know the temperature of the solution for your calculations, so at some point, be sure to measure the temperature of your reaction solution with an accurate thermometer and write it down in your lab book. To measure the purpleness of your sample, you'll be taking absorbance readings from a spectrophotometer. To do this, start by using a plastic 1 mil pipette to remove enough of your sample to rinse a spectrophotometer cuvette. 
After rinsing, fill the cuvette to about three quarters full. With the sample compartment empty, adjust the percent transmittance to 0%. Then insert a separate cuvette filled with water and adjust the transmittance to 100%. This is to calibrate the instrument. After that calibration, replace the water-filled cuvette with the cuvette that contains your sample and change the observation mode to absorbance. You can record the absorbance of your sample while noting the time since starting the run. Your first measurement should be within five minutes of starting the reaction. Then take five additional measurements, one every 15 minutes. Be sure to record the exact time each measurement is made. That should be plenty of data to measure how the concentration of permanganate is changing with time for this particular temperature. During a break between measurements, you can get started on run number two, which is the hot one. The only difference between run number one and number two is the temperature at which the reaction takes place. For run number two, again, weigh out 45 grams of benzyl alcohol solution, but this time into a smaller 125 ml Erlenmeyer flask. Then you can immerse your flask into the hot water bath and allow it to heat up for about 15 minutes. Permanganate stock solution is already placed in the water bath for your convenience, so pipette exactly 5 mils of the hot permanganate solution into your Erlenmeyer flask that contains the benzyl alcohol solution. And again note the time so that you know exactly when your reaction started. Keep your flask in the water bath the whole time so it remains at a constant temperature. Using the same technique with the spectrophotometer, measure the absorbance of the hot reaction solution at 5, 12, 19, 26, and 33 minutes, which if you're keeping track is every 7 minutes. You take measurements a little faster with this one because it's reacting faster, and you don't want to miss the action. Finally, don't forget to measure the temperature of your hot reaction solution as well. Like with the room temperature solution, you'll need this information for your calculations later. Okay, so now that we're done with our experiment, what are we going to do with our results? From our experimental data, we can calculate the concentration of permanganate using Beer's Law, which states that the concentration of our sample is equal to the absorbance measurement we recorded divided by constants called the absorptivity of our sample and the path length of the cuvette, both of which are known. We can therefore use this equation to convert all of our absorbance measurements directly to concentrations and subsequently get the natural logarithm of each. The lab manual asks us to determine the rate of reaction for run number one, specifically at the 25 minute mark. By plotting the concentration of our reactant over time for run number one, we see that the rate indeed changes. So we find the 25 minute mark, draw a tangent line, and evaluate the slope of this tangent line. The slope is equal to the change in concentration over the change in time, which tells us how fast the concentration is changing per unit time, and this is exactly what we're looking for. Now, to find the activation energy for this reaction, we need to determine the rate constants for each of our runs. Remember the first order rate law and how it matches the equation of a straight line with the slope equal to the rate constant? Using our data, we can plot the natural log of concentration versus time, and the data should be pretty linear. Draw your best straight line through your data and measure the slope exactly like you did before. Change in the vertical axis divided by change in the horizontal axis. The value of the slope will be equal to minus k, so we'll flip the sign. Repeating this procedure for run number two will give you the second value for the rate constant k that you need to calculate the activation energy using the two-point Arrhenius equation. Since you now know two values for k, the temperatures for each, and the gas constant, we can just manipulate the formula and plug in our numbers to solve for the activation energy, and we're done.